Today it is about lungs and mainly spirometry. And the main theme of today is basically that you're able to tell the major difference between if something is rather obstructive or restrictive. So we're gonna go through, we, we could name it spirometry. And um, what is the flight plan, okay? So flight plan, Pla flight plan. So today's flight plan is first of all, yeah, tell the difference. And I'll give you examples of restrictive versus obstructive diseases, okay? So that's first of all. Then we're gonna go through spirometry parameters that are static. That means like you measure something and you don't care how it changes during time, okay? So we could call them static parameters good then we're gonna do dynamic parameters so these are time dependent then I'm going to just mention a few things about DLCO this is diffusion capacity diffusion lung capacity for CO carbon monoxide and at the end, if we'll have enough of time, if not, we're going to do it some other time. We're going to do a table where we're going to compare all the different diseases. Okay, so the final table. Okay, so that's the flight plan for today. Good. So spirometry. So tell me, guys, why do you think we're doing it? Why it is important? To test lung function. To test lung function, okay. And basically, what would be the first goal? Well, the first goal would be maybe to right away tell us if it's restrictive or obstructive disease, okay? Well, why I say right away? Well, because, okay, then basically the first thing which spirometry can tell you is to confirm whether the, the problem is within the lungs or not, okay? But typically, if you send someone for spirometry, you are already pretty sure that there is a problem within the lungs. Okay, just give you an example. Okay, so if someone has a dyspnea, dyspnea has many causes. It could be due to heart problems. It could be due to anemia. Okay, they can combine, you know, it doesn't have to be only lung problem. So, for example, if someone comes with anemia, you want to sort of rule out that the dyspnea is combined, that the problem is also within the lung. So you can do a spirometry and there, if there is no obstruction and no restriction, then you rule out lungs and you stick with the anemia, that, that's the only cause. But with, if someone comes with anemia, he already knows that is anemia because this is the first thing you, the doctor checks is if, he has, if the patient has anemia or not. So let's write it down. So first of all, the spirometry will tell you if the problem is restrictive or versus obstructive. And actually in some cases it can also tell you, of course, if the problem is within the lungs or not, okay? What could be the other reason why you're doing spirometry? So. First of all, to like diagnose the problem, if it's restrictive or obstructive, what could be the other reason to do spirometry? Tell me. Give me some other reason why to do spirometry, why it is important to do it. Not only to find out the diagnosis or at least to tell if the disease comes from the restrictive field or obstructive, but also when do you do repeatedly spirometry? to find the capacity of the lung. Oh, very good. Okay, so find the, let's say, initial parameters, okay? Or, in other words, also, what if you 
repeat the spirometry all the time. Why do you do that? To evaluate how the disease is going, okay? Because this is a feedback for you, okay? If someone has an obstructive disease and then you give them drugs which prevent the obstruction, if it's an acute obstruction, then this is the way how to monitor the disease, okay? So, so for monitoring, yeah? Get it? For example, in asthma, very crucial. Yeah? So it's, uh, let's say, monitoring the disease or the treatment, how the treatment is doing, if it's, if it's okay or not. For example, you know, sometimes the dyspnea, okay, the feeling, it, it's subjective, okay? And sometimes, for example, we're going to talk a bit about it. You have this really awful disease which kills you in three to five years. And that is called either idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So it's about scarring. Um, it's a irreversible scarring of the lung tissue. But in the US, you call it idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But in Europe, still, we use all the term, which is called a cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis. But it's just the same disease. Okay. So remember, if you come over cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, it's the same disease, okay? And if you have this disease, if you give the patient corticoids, they have a sort of a subjective improvement, but it's subjective, actually. It's not helping them. Like in 20%, it can help them a bit, but in the rest, in the 80%, many of them have a subjective improvement, although the reality is just getting worse and worse, okay? So that's why you need a objective evaluation and this is it why you're doing spirometry to objectively evaluate the disease how it's doing okay and what about another reason can you figure out another reason so i'm monitoring the disease fine what could be another cause why would you send someone to measure the vital capacity for example i'll help you a bit before surgery why can you figure it out? Maybe if the patient is able to like breathe on his own or he needs extra help, uh, something like that. Oh, okay. Well, you're right. It could be, and you're getting it pretty right. But if I'll tell you a serious surgery concerning lungs, I'll help you a bit more. Why would you do spirometry before that? Because you're going to measure the lung capacity and all the curves and whatever. And you are sort of able to predict if you are able to resect part of the lung. So in case of lung surgery, like itself, if there is, a, for example, tumor and you want to take, you know, you sort of have to evaluate if the person is able after you're going to take out the whole lobe or something if he's going to be able to breathe on his own after you wake him up. Because sometimes in the past it really happened that they, you know, took part of his lung and then he was not able to breathe on his own because just the lungs didn't have enough of, let's say, surface to exchange enough of oxygen and CO2 to support the blood flow and distribution of oxygen, okay? So it's crucial, especially in terms of lung resections, to evaluate if if it's possible to uh, resect the, and get rid of part of the lungs or not. Okay, so pre-operation and like lung resection prediction. Okay, well, and fourth one, well, maybe you thought about it. Sports, of course, yeah, it depends. So if someone, you know, like this is the other extreme, like how good is your vital capacity and how much it improves when you're doing certain special sports as swimming etc etc or basically how you are good for this sport or that sport okay and now let's get to obstructive and restrictive diseases so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and as always Check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.